The legendary Voyager mission is fast approaching its 50th birthday, but remarkably, both probes have shown exceptional resilience and continue to transmit data back to Earth to this day. However, old age is finally starting to catch up to these legendary pathfinders. Every once in a while, NASA must update these probes and take corrective actions to ensure their continuity. But how are these updates possible from 15 billion miles away? In 2015, NASA posted a job opening seeking a software engineer with specialized skills. The ideal candidate needed expertise in Fortran and assembly, programming languages dating back to the 1940s and 1950s, which are not commonly known by recent graduates. The position aimed to expand the small team dedicated to the Voyager space probes. Remarkably, both Voyager probes continue to operate using their original 50-year-old computers equipped with a mere 70 kilobytes of memory. Despite the seemingly limited capacity, this was sufficient for the probes to navigate through our solar system and uncover remarkable findings during their missions. As expected, Voyager's computers encounter occasional issues. In a recent incident, Voyager 1 began transmitting distorted telemetry data regarding its orientation in space. Additionally, the thrusters responsible for maintaining Voyager's proper alignment were displaying signs of wear and tear. Each time the thrusters are utilized, minuscule particles of hydrazine fuel accumulate in the pipelines, leading to blockages over time. Voyager has already switched to its backup thrusters, and if these were to fail, it would mark the conclusion of Voyager's operational capabilities. Situated 15 billion miles away, there's no practical means of physically clearing the tubes. However, to mitigate the accumulation and address the telemetry issue, the small team overseeing Voyager initiated the development of a software update intended to be transmitted across the vastness of our cosmos for corrective measures. Hey Spacers, just as the Voyager needs an update, so does our channel. So please remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more videos on some of the greatest space missions of all time. And now, let's get updated. Voyager is equipped with three primary computers. The primary computer oversees major instruments, monitors health and temperature, and manages the other two computers. The second computer is responsible for maintaining Voyager's orientation, utilizing predetermined reference points to operate the thrusters and ensure the spacecraft's antenna consistently faces Earth. The third computer is tasked with storing and managing the scientific data and images captured by Voyager's instruments. Voyager lacks an operating system and introducing a programming language would consume too much space. Despite this, Voyager has undergone updates before. Upon reaching Neptune, where the light was 900 times dimmer than on Earth, engineers had to reprogram the probe's camera to capture longer exposures for taking pictures. After departing Neptune, NASA started shutting down non-essential components like the camera and various scientific instruments to conserve power. However, with only 70 kilobytes of memory on the computer, retaining lines of code for inactive instruments was considered a waste of space. So, engineers undertook the significant task of rewriting Voyager's code and implementing a software update to ensure its continued functionality. Updating such old hardware from a distance of 15 billion miles poses a considerable challenge. To comprehend the complexity of this process, it's essential to understand how the software operates on Voyager. To perform a software update on the probe, NASA must install the new code into its computers. A fascinating aspect of Voyager's computers is their memory. Each computer possesses plated wire memory, 
storing Voyager's code in its most fundamental form of ones and zeros. This type of memory is comprised of a physical grid of wires and thin metal plates where each intersection point represents a single bit of memory capable of storing either a one or zero. Through passing a current through one of the plates and a specific wire, a magnetic field is generated. The direction of this magnetic field determines whether it's considered a zero or one. If the field is in a specific direction, it's a zero, and if it goes in the opposite direction, it's a one. By altering the current's direction, the magnetic field's direction changes, flipping the bit to a zero or one accordingly. Saving ones and zeros into the memory involves determining the magnetic field's direction at each intersection point, effectively storing the information. This design was advantageous as it ensured that even if power was lost, the ones and zeros would persist in the memory. Additionally, each bit could be updated individually. Given Voyager's limited total memory of 70 kilobytes, engineers must be highly efficient in crafting their code. In addition to its basic machine code, Voyager employs its own pseudocode, consisting of shortcut commands that efficiently execute repetitive tasks without consuming excessive memory. An onboard interpreter on the main computer reads the ones and zeros, and upon encountering a predefined code, it activates the pseudocode to perform a specific command. Humans require a more advanced programming language than just ones and zeros to write code for Voyager. This is because coding in binary, ones and zeros, is impractical for complex programs. Instead, programmers use higher level languages to create the instructions that Voyager's computers can understand. On Earth, the Voyager software was initially written in assembly language, supplemented with a bit of Fortran. Assembly is a simpler language that is closer to machine language, making it more understandable for humans. Once the code is written, it is compiled into machine code, which can then be transmitted to Voyager through the deep space network. The data is transmitted to Voyager at a rate of 16 bits per second, and it takes nearly a whole day for the data to reach Voyager. The computers on board Voyager operate on an interrupt-driven system, meaning that the software goes through its regular instructions until it receives an interrupt signal. When an update is sent to Voyager, it carries an interrupt signal. When Voyager receives the interrupt signal, it instructs the main computer to pause its regular operations and focus on implementing the update instructions. The new code is loaded into the memory, with the bits being flipped to their new positions. The code is then carefully reviewed to ensure accuracy, and once verified, the main computer resumes normal operations. Throughout the years, Voyager has undergone numerous updates and patches aimed at fixing issues and enhancing its functionality. For instance, in 1995, an update was developed to essentially reboot certain components in case of failure. In 2014, approximately 20 years after the code was initially written, this code proved crucial in saving Voyager 1 when a hardware malfunction occurred. In 2010, a single bit in Voyager's memory flipped, changing a zero to a one. This disrupted the synchronization between computers causing commands to be executed two and a half hours later than expected. A software update was transmitted to rectify the issue by flipping the faulty bit back into its correct position. Such remarkable stories underscore the resilience of these iconic space probes, enabling them to endure nearly 50 years in space. It is truly extraordinary that the physical wires transistors and hardware on Voyager's computers continue to operate as intended after such an extended period. What do you think, Spacers? How long do you think the Voyagers will continue to function? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe 
to our channel for more awesome space content. Thank you for spacing out with us and see you next video.